Acute pain is traumatic and very inconvenient, but it can also be a good thing. So it is a survival mechanism, and it's probably the only way I would have learned not to touch the stove after not listening to my mom. Chronic pain, on the other hand, is a $125 billion a year problem where the best pharmaceutical treatments still risk exacerbating the pain or becoming addictive. So we need to take a step back and look at the bigger picture here. As far as research is concerned, pain has been studied, yes. But the transition between acute to chronic pain, however, that's more of a gray area in the literature as I've summarized in red. But let's start with what we know. So the immune, endocrine, and nervous systems, they actually all cooperate with each other to create a painful experience. So for example, you get injured, the cells and the nerves in that area begin to actively release chemicals and hormones. And at the same time, you're stressed out, so your stress hormones are elevated, and this is activating your immune system. So this is recruiting a whole host of inflammatory proteins to that same region. So now you've got chemicals, hormones, and inflammatory proteins all coming together and they're hypersensitizing your nerves to the point where things that didn't hurt, like touch, that hurts now. And things that hurt before, they hurt like funding rejections now. Painful, but not abnormal, right? We all know what that is and it's a normal response in the human body. The problem is when these processes don't properly resolve themselves and it becomes a constant ongoing issue. On top of that, you've got your psychological and your social factors that are actually contributing to this as well. So things like fear, anxiety, depression, stress, and the types of social supports that you have in your life, all of this can actively contribute to that same pain mechanism. So where does that leave us? Well, protein technology, nowadays anyway, is such that we can actually take the saliva from acute pain populations of people and measure specific things like hormones and proteins in the body. So we can see what's happening internally. If we link that to their psychosocial factors, that basically gives us a whole profile of their pain progression. So when we follow them for about six months or so, the question becomes, are they going to start looking like a healthy population and recover, or are they going to start to look like a chronic pain population and slowly deteriorate? So if we can figure out how that's happening, we could potentially understand the major biological patterns that are driving this transition and maybe where we could intervene in that vicious cycle so that they're not in constant agony and their every waking moment does not have to feel like grad school. Thank you.